well. Talk about runaway sequels. Alright. I know I mentioned I was trying not to jump around too much in things, timelines, and try to throw up reviews in relative order for... to avoid confusion in plot lines, but... Well, I don't really think it mattered too much for this one, and I'm pretty sure I'm right. And that is the Lake Placid Legacy. Now, I this series is one that got way away from me and jumped the alligator a long time ago. Okay. <clears throat> so, the original Lake Placid was a slightly above average giant animal movie circa 1999. And it was fairly entertaining. I haven't seen it in years. But, you know, it was fine. And I don't think I've seen it since a couple of years after it came out. Never really needed to revisit it. I found this one for a dollar, and just mostly due to name recognition, I picked it up. I don't actually own a copy of the original Lake Placid, so I couldn't really easily slap that one in there. I could have checked if it was on streaming, but I didn't care enough to really. I felt like I knew enough going in. Now, I knew there had been at least a sequel or two to Lake Placid. This is the sixth sequel. Or, number six. Fifth sequel. Why? It wasn't... There was no reason for that one to get so many sequels. I mean... I know horror movies suffer from sequelitis a lot. I mean, Wrong Turn really got away from us. Cabin Fever went unnecessary. But I didn't think, I knew the class went uh, up to three. And then number four was the final chapter. Ha 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 ha. Then they went Lake Placid versus Anaconda, which the title doesn't even make sense. The lake is fighting an Anaconda? And then we got Lake Placid Legacy. Okay. I'm pretty sure I didn't need to see any of the others to understand this one, because it doesn't... You can even take out the Lake Placid series, and this movie would still work. That's a lie. This movie doesn't even work. But it wouldn't change anything. They don't even say the word Lake Placid until about 10, 15 minutes before the movie's done. This doesn't even take place at Lake Placid. At least I don't think it does. It was kind of confusing on that point. I should not be confused by an alligator movie. Okay, so what passes for a plot in this one is a group of urban explorer slash eco activists. They just want to drop their mark on various places. They break into big corporations and plant like banners, bashing them. Anyway. They have a rival guy who challenges them to reach this one particular point. And, well, there they go. And the beginning is interspliced with seeds of a guy being hunted by something, which has absolutely nothing to do with anything in the rest of the movie. So, they go to this, it's an island in the middle of a lake somewhere, they don't really say. They mentioned the original Lake Placid was in Maine. They don't really say where they are here. I don't know where they are. I don't think this is Lake Placid. Pretty sure not. But they never really clarify. And later on, the explanation made it sounds like that was somewhere else. <clears throat> I'm getting on a tangent. So, our groups go there with some reluctant guides because they're going to an area that's supposed to be poisonous, radioactive, it's been sealed off by the government for 20-something years. Which I guess they're trying to keep in the timeline, because this movie came out 19 years after the original. 
The original had better effects. Anyway, so they get to the island and pretty quickly realize that uh, the guy, their rival's team has been killed by something. And so they quickly try to leave, only to have their boat try out uh, destroyed. I will say for a giant alligator movie, it takes a long time to actually start showing the big old gator. Usually you just get, like, see something moving below the water, passing by, you'll see something be pulled under at first. Now, this isn't really because they're trying to be clever about it. I think they're just trying to cover up the really bad alligator effects, because holy CG monstrosity. It's ugly. This picture on the back here is not in the movie. And that's more of a convincing looking thing than what's in here. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to spoil the hell out of this thing, so I don't think anyone cares. Uh, it turns out that the island here is a abandoned research facility for a some sort of medical research company who were experimenting on alligators for some reason. Anyway, they were fusing ancient ancestor DNA in with alligators to create big alligators for medical research because stem cells. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And uh, now there's a giant alligator that's trying to kill them all. And there's one guy from the company who has uh, pretty much lured them all here. He's mostly just trying to use it as a cover so he can trank a gator and get some DNA from it, so I can continue the research. And they give some cockamamie thing about how one of the original researchers took a gator from here, and that became the original gator from Lake Placid, even though, from what I recall, that doesn't make any sense for that movie, but I don't think this is too concerned about continuity. <clears throat> anyway... Um, yeah. So, what can I say about this one? The gator effects are terrible. I already said that. The acting varies from alright to wood. To quote the old woman from the original Lake Placid, I'm rooting for the gator. Because most of the characters here aren't that likable. You got, they encounter the rival team, so you got the main guy and him squabbling back and forth. You got the two sisters who, one of them is, I mean, was sympathetic at first, but then she just became obnoxiously whiny. You got the asshole jock, picking on the stereotypical nerd. The continuity of the gator's size just seems to shift wildly. In some scenes, it's, it seems immense. Otherwise, it just seems kind of sort of big. It depends on what space they're trying to make it fill, really. So there's no consistency there. It's on another one of those ones where the animal is just an asshole because it's stalking them continually despite um, having fed quite regularly. Uh, one of the sisters has a terrifying fear of heights that evaporates completely after the one scene where she falls. And, most, and this one, most characters, if something happens to them and they get an injury, they are injured. Except for her, because when she falls, like, it looked like a story onto her, flat onto her back, and she just walks it off. She's fine. Doesn't even react. You know, a girl who just got her leg Tug, uh, then got pretty much uh, a rope wrapped around her leg and tugged out by a boat. Her leg is completely broken and then snapped her own. There's no consistency for what injuries are doing to people here. This movie brings really nothing. I mean, I wasn't expecting much, so I suppose I got that at least. 
It's a TV, a TV movie for the Sci-Fi Channel. Your bar can only be so high. From what I remember from the original Lake Placid, I would have probably given it a three MacGuffin at best. This one, it wasn't good, but it wasn't utterly abysmal. I mean, it doesn't have anything really redeeming it. But it wasn't shockingly terrible, so two MacGuffins is kind of fitting for this one. I think this one they're trying to almost go for some sort of a reboot to try to kick things back up, but no. Just, the series never needed to continue past the first one. It was an okay movie. It did not need even worse sequels. That's... That's about it for this. If you want a giant gator movie, just stick with Primeval. Primeval's a fine one. Or the original like Placid's serviceable. Alligator. Crocodile. The, some of the originals for big gator movies. Those ones are old, but... I remember Alligator was fine. I don't know if I ever actually saw Crocodile. Crocodile 2, Death Swamp, you can avoid that one. This one, I think it was even worse than Crocodile 2, so... Yeah. Skip Lake Placid Legacy. Oh, another thing. That title, Lake Placid Legacy. Now, Legacy is something, you know, you leave behind a legacy. It's something that comes after. But, this one's more explaining the origin for the gators at the lake. So it isn't really a legacy in any sense of it, so the title doesn't even make sense. I know that's just a nitpick, but when there's nothing that's distracting me from things like that, I'm gonna nitpick. Because there's nothing to grab onto. It's a TV movie, so despite it having an R rating, actually, somehow, it's the gore effects really aren't there, other than some CG obnoxiousness. I mean, you get, like, one scene of some organs strewn about that looked okay, but most of the attacks are so badly shot you can't tell what's going on. Or so laughable. No. Two MacGuffins. And that's being generous. Mm. I gotta get around to watching a good movie again. Ah, I guess Quiet Place 2 was that was good. That was fine. But for those ones I've been pulling up, I should actually watch something I know is better. These crapshoot ones are turning out to be well. Crap. Good night, everybody.